Let's begin this hour in Ukraine, where the current president, President Biden, made an unannounced visit. It is his first trip to the country since the start of the war with Russia. And it's the first time in modern history that a U.S. president entered a war zone without an active military, military presence. Mr. Biden met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in the capital city of Kiev at a critical moment in the war. Friday will mark one year since Russia's invasion. President Biden reiterated U.S. support for Ukraine alongside President Zelensky. The cost that Ukraine has had to bear has been extraordinarily high. And the sacrifices have been far too great. They've been met, but they've been far too great. We mourn alongside the families of those who've been lost to the brutal and unjust war. We know that there'll be very difficult days and weeks and years ahead. But Russia's aim was to wipe Ukraine off the map. Putin's war of conquest is failing. CBS News senior foreign correspondent Charlie Daggett is in Kyiv now following this historic U.S. visit for us. Uh, Charlie, explain the importance of the trip, the message that it sends, specifically to Moscow, one year into its invasion. Welcome back, Vlad. Uh, it is a huge message. It's a huge message to the people of Ukraine, as President Zelensky said, to have uh, an active U.S. president uh, coming to an active and dynamic conflict zone uh, during this critical time, at a time where they're marking uh, the year anniversary since the invasion, where things are still happening here. It's a big moment for um, President Biden in terms of showing support, as he said, to the people of Ukraine and to President Zelensky, and also sending a message, as you said, to President Putin and to Moscow to say that America is here, America's allies are here, and they're going to be here till the end. Uh, and with that, there is a promise of not just support in terms of uh, morale and moral support, uh, but in terms of a military package and uh, more aid to this country. So. It, were we surprised? Absolutely. Were the people of Ukraine surprised? Yes. We knew he was in the neighborhood. There were sort of whispers. Is he going to come? Is he not going to come? There was a huge security effort in place here. And, you know, a blackout. All the roads were closed off. And then, yeah, I mean, we were here at the presidential palace when he showed up. And you know, we had to blink twice to see that President Biden was here at this time. And one of the things that President Biden brought up was an announcement of $500 million in additional aid to Ukraine. I'm not sure exactly what form that takes. Also, additional sanctions against Russia. You know, when I say this, uh, I think of the many times that I have mentioned additional aid and sanctions. And it seems like the war sort of continues on, that the impact on the Russian uh, economy has not been great enough to give Vladimir Putin sort of second thoughts, that, it, that the aid is good but not great enough to bring this war to an end. I'm wondering if there is a conversation about whether or not, um, you know, there is a desire to end the war or just sort of support Ukraine, which is kind of keeping the war going. You know, certainly not at this point, Anne-Marie. President Zelensky said that the only way this war is going to end is when Russia is defeated and when Ukraine takes over all of its territory. He didn't specifically mention Crimea, but he's implied that in the past, and he has been explicit about that before. So as far as he's concerned, that's what victory looks like. But now, is he getting what he needs the to achieve that victory? The yeah, that's what it is. And, yeah. and he's talking about the speed and what we're witnessing here. And this is what President Biden sort of alluded to. We haven't got the details of this five hundred million dollar um, military aid package, but he mentioned ammunition. Now, where that becomes critical, especially now at this phase in the battle, are those high Mars. You know, the long range launchers, uh, artillery. I know it's basic, but that is the kind of fight that's happening here. We've talked a lot about tanks. Tanks may be on the way March or April, but right now they're running out of ammunition for the artillery. And that's where the fighting is primarily taking place. So we heard about that um, from President Biden today. He even spoke about the javelins, which are these shoulder launched. Uh, weapons that are used against tanks that have been here almost for a year now. Really basic, in, in relative terms, uh, basic weapons, and they need the ammunition for that. And again, they need it now. So there is no question at all as to whether this stalemate, as we continue to call it, 
uh, is going to continue. The Russians have been pushing in one direction. The Ukrainians are doing all they can to hold them off, but they are simply running out of ammunition. Weapon systems are important. Ammunition is what they need quickly. Uh, so, Charlie, again, I'm struck by the fact that the president of the United States is in an active war zone. Uh, what's happening on the front lines right now uh, as the president meets with Zelensky? Yeah, you know, when we and others report about uh, the front line stagnating, there hasn't been a lot of movement. That doesn't mean there hasn't been a lot of fighting. We saw it ourselves in the past few days. We've been along the front lines. And there wasn't a five-minute period that went by that there weren't explosions taking place, either incoming or outgoing. Some of those are big weapons that the Russians are using, S-300s, uh, anti-aircraft uh, missiles. Um, just outside Kharkiv, seven of them fell a couple of days ago. These are active and dynamic uh, conflict zones, and it's happening all the time. So the Russians have been pushing forward where they can specifically if you want to if you want to mention that down in zaporizhia up outside kupiansk where we were just a couple of days ago uh the defense officials feel that there's going to be a push there because there's been this huge uh buildup of russian forces and equipment there so they're expecting this russian offensive to take place is it going to happen all at once they're going to blow the whistle and then it all happens they don't think that's going to happen it's happening incrementally but it is happening all the time and that's what they're most concerned about so yes there hasn't been a lot of movement back and forth in some cases one of the villages we went to is only 500 meters in the past few weeks on either side but they are fighting for it constantly. Wow. Charlie Daga, thank you very much.